519, God is saying, use them. Use sing songs. Sing in your heart to God, even by yourself. And so um, <clears throat> kind of like a person who uh, never exercised and then starts exercising and then starts seeing slowly the benefits, you have more energy. Oh, that's good. Uh, <laughs> and you want to do it more. So uh, that's kind of how my experience has been with singing. Uh, I find myself comforted more. And um, even through this week, just singing this first verse of Amazing Grace at certain times here and there, I found myself uplifted. And so, um, yeah, I'm really <laughs> excited to uh, learn uh, many hymns uh, all by heart that I can just um, sing when I need them. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully it will benefit all of us. I'm sure it will. Um, this, uh, the one thing I wanted to point out in this verse is uh, John Newton was the one that wrote the verse, and he's writing about how amazing God's grace is. And I was thinking uh, this second line, uh, it's how amazing is it? It saved a wretch like me. How amazing is it that God saved a wretch like me? Um, and I was thinking that uh, a wretch, <clears throat> basically, we were all wretches before we came to Christ, and then God saved us. And a wretch was basically on the same plane as the devil from how much from a standpoint of how deserving we are to be in fellowship with Christ. Uh, like from zero to 100, how deserving is the devil to know God and have a relationship with him? It's a zero. And the, the same, how deserving is a wretch? It's a zero. Like I was basically a zero. And so for God to basically save someone uh, like that, save me when I was a wretch and bring me to him, to fellowship with him and make me, um, bring me into his kingdom and want to desire, actually want to desire me. Um, I was just, it is amazing. I could see. So it's am amazing grace. We can, let's be singing this uh, in our hearts and um, uh, praise God for the, the men of God and the women of God who have written so many good things uh, in hymns. Um, right here, it's, it's saying speaking in Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So I believe God's saying there's, He's given his word, that's the main thing, but also he's given gifts in brothers and sisters throughout history that are able to write things that can, um, we can sing uh, and that can uplift us. <clears throat> so um, this church, uh, we've uh, made it a practice to um, try to live out 1 Corinthians 14 diligently that talks about where many people from the church can come up and edify uh, the church. The specific verse that I think of when I um, think of it is 1 Corinthians 14, verse 31, that says, For you can all prophesy one by one, so you may all learn and may be exhorted. Um, and then in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says that what prophesy, prophecy is. It says it's edification, exhortation, and consolation. So we can come up here, and if we've God spoken something to our hearts that we've um, tried to put into practice ourselves and been living in sincerity in the secret secret life that nobody else has seen before God alone, then God gives us the authority to uh, speak it. Um, otherwise, it's just theory or um, coming from uh, the wrong type of heart. But if I've tried to live it in myself and God's really changed my life in some little way, even if I haven't lived it successfully yet, but I'm trying and I want to, um, God gives us authority to speak it, and he'll help us. So uh, we practice this, and we're thankful to have uh, many brothers and sisters edify this church that way. <clears throat> we have, um, so I'll, uh, I'll start out and um, share something. And then we have brothers um, Andy, Paul, and Cindy, who are going to be sharing um, today. Last week, you remember, uh, we... Uh, or not last week, but this uh, New Year's Eve, uh, Brother Sadiq shared a um, a sermon, the the points of a sermon, um, and one of the points was the prayers is called prayers for the new year, seven prayers for the new year, and one of those prayers was keeping a clean conscience, um, and so uh, I wanted to um, I, that's been on my heart that specific point, keeping a clean conscience, and I wanted to say a couple things about it. Uh, one episode that I had happen this week was I was um, helping uh, my friend's brother move some furniture around in his house. And um, we were over at his house, and uh, 
he need, there was this really heavy couch sitting on his hardwood floor. We needed to move it into his living room. So my friend and I, we got on the end and there was a couple guys on the other end. We, uh, without really thinking about it, uh, just, we were like, should we carry it? And we tried lifting it up real quick, but it was really heavy. So we're like, well, let's just push it to the end. Uh, and I was thinking, yeah, let's just get this done. I was like, I was like wondering in the back of my mind, is this going to scratch the floor? I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like picking it up. Let's just push it. And then, uh, then after we pushed it across, I look back and there's this huge gouge right down the middle of his hardwood floor. Uh, and I was like, I felt so convicted that my laziness had cost him something. Um, that, and I felt guilty over that. That was my fault. And so I was apologizing and so sorry. And so I, uh, but then I still felt something in my conscience. There was still something pricking me. And I was like, what is it? I said, sorry. Um, and then I felt God speaking to me, something that I had learned a long time ago, that if you sin, you apologize. But if there's something to make right, you also there's, make restitution for it. Um, kind of like Zacchaeus in the story of Zacchaeus, Luke 19, 8. He said, Zacchaeus, after he was had repented, um, he didn't just repent and say sorry to Jesus for all his sins. He said, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I'll give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. Um, and so uh, that was, I believe, the word that, they, that is the word that you apply to when somebody does this is restitution. He was making restitution for a sin. He wasn't just saying sorry, but he was generally repenting and wanting to make it right. And so, um, yeah, I've, uh, uh, I'm learning that um, if, if there's something I can make right, oh, not, not just repenting of my sin in my heart, that's the main thing, but if there's something to make right, to go forward and try to make it right. So I tried to offer um, some way to I could help him fix it, um, but he was, you know, just said, it's an old floor, don't worry about it. But then I got the peace right after that. <laughs> then I had the peace in my heart, and that was the main thing. Um, so I felt like uh, God, uh, yeah, there's there's no, we sing that that verse, uh, that line in there, that it's only in your will that I am free. Um, after saying sorry, I wasn't totally free yet. So I had to be, I had to try to make restitution in order to be in God's will, and then I was free. <laughs> so it's only in your will that I am free. The, the most freest ground to be is on God's will. That's that's the safest ground to be on, repenting and in God's will. And so I've seen the, um, the how huge it is. There can be no rest unless I try to keep a clean conscience before God. There, Jesus said, come to me, all who weary and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. But um, someone who seek, tries to come to Jesus without forsaking sin is seeking Jesus where he can't be found. They'll, they'll never find Jesus holding on to something and not keeping a clean conscience. Um, that promise doesn't apply unless I'm walking in the light, as the um, First John says. The, if we walk in the light, um, I'll just turn there. First John chapter one. <clears throat> if we walk in the light as He is in the light. And the blood of uh, Christ cleanses us from all sin. I don't want to misquote it. <clears throat> First John one seven. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So if I'm not walking in the light, in a sense, I think of walking in the light as keeping a clean conscience. As, as far as I know, I'm in God's will. If there's something I know of that I'm conscious of. Um, you know, it's like walking with a, um, a light, in front, like in a dark room with the light in front of you. If there's a rock there, I, I sweep it out of the way, but I can't do anything about everything that's in the dark, but I can do something about that rock in front of me. If I sweep it out, then I can go forward um, free in God's will. Um, and so I believe that's what walking in the light means. And, um, and if I want to seek Jesus and find him, then I have to get rid of all those conscious sins, keep a clean conscience um, before God. And so uh, I just wanted to give one example I was blessed by in, in uh, David's life, uh, I was blessed by thinking about David, and David, he was in the Old Covenant. He wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit like we can today, uh, can be today. So he um, sinned with Bathsheba, He didn't, uh, and he, he, it took a prophet to come to him and say, look what you did, uh, and then he recognized his sin. But I believe today we don't need um, uh, to wait around for a prophet to come and tell us our sin. God has given us his Holy Spirit, so he'll teach us all things, and he'll tell us right when we've sinned. But, but there was a couple of a few examples in the Bible where David did have a good testimony of keeping a clean conscience, and one of them was in 1 Samuel 24 that I was blessed by. <clears throat> 1 Samuel 24, verse 5 says, uh, so this is, well, let me just explain the story real quick. 
basically Saul was chasing David to try to kill him because he was afraid that David was take, would take his throne. Um, and David was, had always been good to him. Um, and this was David's chance to kill Saul. Saul had uh, gone into a cave, and David was actually hiding in the back of the cave, and Saul had gone in there to go to the bathroom. And then uh, David secretly snuck up behind him, and he cut an edge off of Saul's robe. Um, he didn't even touch Saul, but he cut a little edge off his robe, and it said right here, it came about afterward that David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the edge of Saul's robe. And he said, far be it from me because of the Lord that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to stretch out my hand against him since he is the Lord's anointed. So he convinced all his, his men not to kill Saul. Um, they were thinking he was crazy. Every other man in that cave would have killed Saul. Easy, no problem. But David had such a sensitive conscience there, in this instance, that even cutting off a, an edge, little edge of the rope, he was convicted by. And I was thinking, I hope I have a sensitive conscience like that. Um, even if they're I, touching a little corner of sin, that um, I'll be sensitive to it and repent quickly and... Um, David could have gotten everything right there. He could have killed Saul and got the kingship right away, but he didn't. He waited in God's timing, and God, uh, he, he did it the right way, and God granted him uh, the kingdom um, of to be king over Israel. And then, um, uh, so that so David, I believe, was somebody who tried to live in general. He wasn't perfect, but he tried to live by his conscience. And then in Psalm chapter thirty-eight, this is a um, psalm of David. Uh, and I believe this is him pouring out himself when he's felt that guilty conscience. Maybe not at that instance, but in, maybe another time, but this was still, um, it's still a blessing to read. He said, I'll start, to start from verse 2. For your, he's talking to the Lord. For your arrows have sunk deep into me, and your hand has pressed down on me. So to me, that sounds like a, a guilty conscience. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation, there's no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden, they weigh too much for me. Uh, if we're walking with God faithfully and we come into sin, we'll feel that heavy burden. We'll feel those arrows in our heart. And that's God. Uh, that's God's gift. It says he disciplines those that he loves. And I believe one of the primary ways that he disciplines us is by convicting us of sin. That godly sorrow that we feel in our hearts, that's God's love. Um, putting some uh, some stirring in there, saying uh, that's wrong. Uh, if you want to be like Christ, I know you do. Then turn and repent of this. And um, this is the way that God brings us through life and brings us to higher and higher degrees of Christ likeness. Uh, he's always cleansing us. And um, and so uh, if we're faithful, I believe that um, the Bi I mean the Bible teaches that. Uh, if we're faithful with little, he'll give us more. If we're faithful to listen to the quiet whispers when he's convicting us, then he'll convict us even more. It's sensitive. But if we are just brush him off and kind of move along our day and don't really care him speaking, then it's going to be so much harder to hear God's word. It's like the hardening. It's like our conscience is getting seared. It's the hardening of our heart. Um, and uh, uh, we'll hear, it'll be very, very hard to hear words from the Lord if we're not walking with a clean conscience. Um, but if we are denying ourselves in the little tiny things that maybe even to 99.9% .9 of people they wouldn't have think of as wrong, but we're faithful with those little things, we'll be able to hear God so much clearly. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that's my uh, that's my encouragement, my exhortation, myself. Uh, be sensitive, keep a clean conscience, be sensitive, and, um, and uh, praise God that he provided Jesus to wipe out everything before so we can have clean conscience, even things that we can't make right. Jesus made it right on the cross. So um, praise God uh, for what Jesus did. Um, this, uh, so we have um, our brothers Andy, Paul, and then Cindy.